We need to go into... We need to go north of the mill and south of the brook. Alright, so we started again. We've, we've, we're trying to blaze the intro here. So let's check out the map. we got to head to the windmill again, so... Is that a new piece of paper up there? What the hell is this? The... The... Olam? What does that say? The Olam 68. Alright, let me just scribble this down while we uh, think about this. The Olam 68, what could that possibly mean? Well, that's north of the mill, so is there something south of the brook? What is this? 1894. That's very ominous. Okay, so let's just go to our box here. We might not have to go to the windmill at all. Oh, hold on, where's the journal? That's for the journal, isn't it? The Olam... Olam 68, 1894. What? <laughs> That's not it. North of the mill, south of the brook, it's got it written here for us. Away. The Olam. Oh, I'm an idiot. That's what it is. That's okay. The Olam 68. 1894. Connecting. You were looking in Theodor Olmsten. Wow, what is this? This is everything that happened? Wow. January 1st, okay. Well, let us read it from the top. Testing photo upload. Should probably write here more often. Oh, this is like developer journal. Might be 30 years too late. Okay. May I never grow old. The last interview was intriguing and very brief. Talk to one Astrid Janssen. She was over 100 years old. Clear at times. Did not know a lot about folklore. But she did claim that her grandfather's brother had once year walked. Sadly, she did not know his name. He died many years before she was born. Might have to look into it. Her maiden name was Svensson, which leaves me with a lot of possibilities. <laughs> she was born in that top, and I can only hope that her grandfather was as well. More interviews. Nothing worth mentioning. Professor Asp called today. He hinted that the faculty wanted to take part in my research. Followed up my visit to the retirement home. In the early 20th century, there were six households in Vedtop with the surname Svensson, according to the church book. Astrid was born in 1913. Her grandfather was named Karl Friedrich. He had two brothers. One died in 42. The other brother, Daniel Svensson, died in 1895. 1894 being the password for the journal. Since Astrid said that her great-uncle died before she was born, Daniel is the only one supposedly that supposedly you walked. A Miller apprentice. Going to the library to check out the old newspapers tomorrow. Look for reference of Daniel Svensson, grasping his straws. Another day, nothing of interest. Bored, about to give up. The newspapers finally mention a Daniel Svensson. He was apparently arrested for the murder of a young woman in Vedtop. Information is scarce. Her name was Stina Nielsen, and she was a miller's daughter. Her body was found on a field outside of the village. She'd been stabbed multiple times. Whoa. The motive behind the murder seems to have been jealousy. Not many details. Apparently Stina was going to marry a Lucas Tapper. She was on her way home from Lucas's parents when she was intercepted by Daniel. She was found the following morning, just 17 years old. I feel a tad guilty about my excitement. This is the windmill setup. A miller's daughter. Murdered in the forest. Stabbed multiple times. This is our story. The press seemed to have lost interest in the case after a while. Found nothing today. Had a long talk on the phone with ES. The murder case was unknown to him. He had, however, spent a lot of time in Vedtop during the 60s when he studied folklore in the area. There had been a rather peculiar runestone that seemed to uh, predate the Viking Age. ES claims that there was a definite connection between the symbols on the stone and year walking. He could not tell how. Went to check it out. Went to the library again. In case I missed something about Daniel, did I had? Okay, got the article. Perhaps there's more to learn about Daniel. Booked a hotel room in Vedtop. Arrived in Vedtop. Small place. 
One street cuts through the village. It's a rather depressing place. To be fair, the weather would not do any place justice. The hotel is empty besides me and a group of dog toy manufacturers who are on a bit on the noisy side. Okay. Just got back from the archive. An interesting place. Sadly, it's only open four hours a day. Okay. The archive has exceeded my wildest dreams. On New Year's Eve, a year... On New Year's Eve, year 1893, Daniel Svensson did indeed year walk. The court, rec the court records refer to his year walk at several occasions. I've just started to scratch the surface. There must be beliefs hidden amongst these papers that have been forgotten for ages. This is by the far the latest recorded year walk. I hope I'm excused for borrowing the file from the archive. They gave me little choice since they closed on the weekend. Could not sleep last night. Too excited. Many of the records are of a legal nature, but there, are, but there are relevant passages. Passages. Daniel claimed he knew that he would murder Stina. Daniel claimed he knew that he would murder Stina after seeing it in a vision on his year walk. Sadly, the scribe has not bothered to take it all down, and occasionally just refers to it as ramblings of a madman. There are certain elements that are new to me. Daniel's cabin Solsto Solsto I can't say this Solsoten is briefly mentioned in protocol. Right. Is that a box? Drove around for hours in the forest today. There are woods to get lost in. Ask for the directions from every local. Most people never heard of the cabin. I was about to give up when I met an old man. His aunt lived there till the 60s. From, there it, from then it had three different owners that used it as a summer house until the mid-1980s. The last family that owned the cabin only stayed there one summer. A five-year-old son drowned in a brook nearby, and after that they never returned. Nobody has lived there since. The old man's nephew owned the land. I asked the old man if I could pay it a visit. He didn't think there would be anyone that would mind. The cabin is situated deep in the forest. No sign, no road, just a narrow path. This was the place where he started his year walk a hundred years ago. Felt overwhelmed by the thought and could not enter. It's a, lo it's a lonely place. The only other building I could find in the area was an underground storehouse. Guess it might have belonged to the cabin. It was too dark to see anything, but I can't imagine there would be anything of significance in there. On my way back to the car, I found this strange box. What an odd thing to leave in the middle of the forest. It seems to be in more or less mint condition. I couldn't resist taking it. Tonight I need whiskey. Went to Vedtop Church today. It's a small white stone church built in the 12th century. The place where the church stands has been used for worship even earlier than that, according to the priest I met. He showed me around the premises. Put a bouquet of flowers on Stina's grave. Seemed appropriate. The almost unlikely somber epitaph read, In memory of our loving daughter, Stina Nielsen, 1877-1894. to Her cries for mercy could not sway his hand. Depressing. Search for Daniel's grave, but there was no stone, and according to the priest, there probably never was. The gravestone's ears told me about are gone. The priest is not sure where they are or when they disappeared. Weather has been unreasonably bad. Spent the day at the county archive. Had trouble concentrating. Tried to locate a photograph of Daniel Svensson, but no luck. The clerk explained that a lot of the stuff was lost when the files were moved from the regional archive back in 76. Apparently there was another murder case in Vedtop in the 1890s. Elisa Rasmussen drowned four infants in a creek. She was an angel maker who received foster children from poor unmarried mothers. Lisa promised to find the baby's good homes in exchange for a hefty sum of money. This was of course all a charade. As soon as the mothers had paid what little they owned, she drowned their children in a nearby creek. All files from that trial have been lost, outrageously. I think I'm done with the archive. I've been thinking a lot about that church. Strange day. The runestone ears talked about is not marked on any map. Talked to the man at the service station. He drew me a, a rather primitive map. Searched for the stone for a long time and almost for, and almost gave up. Found it at last. I felt compelled to touch it. I had the strangest sensation of looking beyond... Beyond what? Feeling lasted for quite some time. Heading home tomorrow. Wish I had more time. This stone is old. It might predate Christianity. But I fail to see how it's connected to year walking. 
could not resist stopping by the church on my way home. Walked around it for a bit. It's a pretty church, not remarkable, but there's something about it. I feel that the church and the stone are somehow connected. Found the box when I unpacked. I'd almost forgotten about it. it seems to have some lock-like construction. But I've yet to understand exactly what it is I had to open it. It reminds me of one of those puzzle boxes. The wheel with the symbols suggests it's opened by entering a password. Must be old. Maybe ES knows something about it. Decided not to tell ES about the box. He might not appreciate that I took it with me. Busy week. Classes and meetings. This faculty is really getting in the way of my research. Feeling a bit strange. I've had a weird dream since I came back from Vedtop. Dreamt that I was in a vast wasteland. I was searching for the keys to my locker together with Jenny from high school. We laughed and dug in the sand. Suddenly the sky lit up and Jenny pointed to a simple constellation of stars. She whispered in my ear to never forget it. I asked her what it meant, but she was dead and her bones were withered and old. Woke up and I've been feeling rather uneasy ever since. Read an account of a year walk by a man named Romadal in an old book I overcame... I, I came over in a used bookshop. Romaldal's story is a little more than a, a tall tale told by a drunken oaf. Most of them seem to be. Daniel sticks out. Haunts me. Held a lecture on year walking. Several faculty members attended it. They ridiculed me in front of the students. Another strange dream. Was doing my homework. Was stressed because the old oil lamp was running out of oil. And when it did, the pale horse outside the window would come inside. The lamp burned out and everything went black. Woke up soaked in sweat. Must remember to buy groceries. Fiddled with the box. I have absolutely no clue how to open it. What jealous, small-minded, greedy creatures the faculty members are. Members are, And they will undoubtedly... Undoubtedly create small-minded, jealous, and greedy students. Don't feel the need to share any of my research with the faculty anymore. They don't deserve to read something that my hands has written. My hand has written. Okay. The thought of what's inside the box is like an itch that can't be scratched. I've searched for references to anything about it, but I've found nothing that resembles it at all. Having more strange dreams. Something happened in those woods. Is year walking a mere vision quest? Are the visions brought on by lack of light and food? Yes, believe so. I am not so sure. Dreamt of the runestone. Was in the forest outside Vedtop. Mrs. Bowman was walking up to me. I was very afraid. She said that I had been a bad boy and broken the rules. Before I could defend myself and tell her that I did not mean to be naughty, she'd withered into dust. I found myself in front of the rune stone. The Grimm's eyes glowed at me. I woke up. I find myself thinking of the stone. What does it mean and how is it connected to year walking? What did people do in those woods? Do not feel like sleeping tonight. Drinking coffee and watching TV. If I stay awake, those dreams will stay away. Could not understand much of my students' presentations today. I've got to sleep. Someone's watching me. All the time. Got an email reminder to, email reminder to deliver the text for the game. Wrote seven or eight pages. Hopefully it's enough. Waiting, but I don't know for what. Have a feeling something is on its way. Received another email today. Got over a thousand of these during the night. The emails seem to have stopped when my inbox was full. Don't know what it could mean. Maybe if maybe it's a prank by students, but they seem too unimaginative to come up with something like this. I don't think it will end here. Some kind of threat? Called the priest, told him of my plight. He said that Vedtop sometimes had a strange effect on people, but it rarely lasted. I don't think he understands. I was going to ask him about about the box, but decided to hang up when he he suggested I should see someone. Woke up again last night. Heard baby screams from beneath the floorboards. Panicked. Managed to pry up some of the floorboards and the screaming stopped. The Watchers. The Night Raven. The Huldra. The Brook Horse and the Church Grim. There might be others, but I can't be sure. Can they disguise themselves? Maybe they can read my mind. The Watchers. Because they watch. That's what they do. But is it all they do? Your walking works, but it was never meant to. It's against the rules. 
The universe blinked its eye and someone crossed all barriers that are known as time and space. The watchers are watching, but who are watching the watchers? How can you bend time and space? Got in a heated argument with the ES. He's surprisingly scornful of my theories. Must remember that he's an old man and he might not be as open to new ideas any longer. He claims that it's impossible to gaze into the future. The future is not set. Nothing happens until it happens. Of course, it's impossible to look into the future according to logic, but I'm not sure they were playing according to our rules. The Watchers are more than they appear, and less. They are real, yet they are unreal. They do not exist in the manner that this table and this chair exist. How do I know these things? Are they my thoughts? Am I writing this? I certainly did not draw this, but yet it's right there in my notebook. Watchers or antibodies? Daniel broke the rules and he was punished. He held another lecture. The last one for a long time. Oh, the last one for a long while, it seems. It's been decided that I need a break. Matters not. I have more important things to do. I've been an idiot. Someone's playing with me. These shapes. It's the same as on the box. Did someone see me take it? Tried the symbols I've received, but the box remains shut. There must be more coming. Woke up last night. The telephone rang. Answered. Could not hear anyone. Hung up. Rang again. I answered. Could hear someone speak on the other side. Could not make out what was being said. The voice was too far away. Hung up. Kept ringing. I cut the cord. Bought whiskey. Bought food. People stare. Don't want to go out there again. Too many pe Too many know who I am. If you break the rules, there would be consequences. Wish I had not cut the cord to my phone. I need to hear a human voice. I don't dare, 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 I don't dare to go out. At first I didn't even notice. One of the paintings in my living room has been replaced. It must have happened during the 30 minutes I slept. I can't let my guard down. Someone was here, or something. Will the antibodies come for me? Am I a virus in the eye of the universe? Boarded up the balcony, all the windows. Nothing can come in now, I hope. Shouldn't be possible, but someone is here again. I'm definitely being threatened. There was a knife on my kitchen table. I realize that the knife is his. We are connected. The church is central to this, and yet it is not. Perhaps the church itself is not important, but rather the energy of the place. Perhaps the gate is always there, but it's not a gate. Gates are meant to be open, or closed. This is a rift in the fabric of the very existence of everything. But why even allow it? Why does the universe or God or someone not shut the gate? If we're not meant to do it, then why let us? I can hear the heart of the universe beating. What is happening? I feel like a worm under a big boot. I feel a shadow hanging over me, waiting to get crushed. She sings and I shall follow. She's trying to fool me, that I know, but I must get closer to her because then I get closer to the key that leads to the heart of it all. I didn't steal the box because it... I didn't steal the box because it begged me to take it with me. Daniel survived all the watches sent by the universe. He was lured by the temptress, brought the innocence to the pale horse, unearthed the parasite, and finally faced the master of them all. But yet he was destroyed. Could it have gone any other way? Was he doomed from the start? Am I doomed? Is the future set or can it be altered? Must help him. It's the right thing to do. There is a bond between us. Might have figured it out. Five watches, five symbols, which mean there is one more coming. So tired. I can't seem to hold my thoughts for any period of time. Should probably eat more often, but I must resist. It's important that I come prepared. The heart beats stronger, but I'll break it and see beyond everything. In the end, it was the nature of man that got Daniel. I must free myself of all desires. That's how they get you. Can love really be a weakness? Or is it a strength? And the poor girl. It just seems unfair. Is there anything I can do? If the future can be altered, why not the past? Am I playing the part of the fool in the cosmic play? If so, to what purpose? Disconnected the microwave oven, just in case. Feeling absolute terror at the possibility that there is no purpose. No rhyme, no reason to any of it. Why me? The only way I can help him is if I break the rules. It will come at a price, but what do I care if I can rise above it all? I saw her lifeless body. 
She's beautiful even in death. I've been crying ever since. But all seems so endless, needless, so cruel. Ready for anything, and I don't care anymore. It's finally here, the last one. I woke up with this on my palm. I tried to wash it out, but it's a tattoo. I tested them in all different kinds of combinations, but I could not figure out how to do it. I must sleep. I will open the box tomorrow. Of course, so simple. Rotate the wheel and release when the symbol aligns with the grim. In the order they were delivered to me. But why was it empty? I thought it was Daniel all along. I thought he was here. But it cannot have been he who sent me the password. It just doesn't make sense. If the box was empty, it means it must be filled. I still do not understand who sent the symbols. If it was not the boy, then it must have been the watchers. But why? Are they toying with us? Helping us in some perverse, twisted way? From the get-go, he was doomed. They got him at every thought... Every... They got him at the very thought of year walking. But I think the girl can be saved. I put everything he needs in the box and locked it. I will leave it where I found it. Where all of this started. My mind is set on this. Does it mean I'm doomed too? The rift is open. It wants me to go through. Pack my things. I wonder if I'll ever come back. Solzotten. It's cold here. Wish I could light a fire, but I must do it right. Surprised how calm I feel. Only hours remain. It's midnight. Wow. Wow. The box filled with Daniel's things. And the symbols. I assume the symbols are in the journal. Somewhere. Okay, I I recall there were a few. Oh wow, well, let's quickly race through. He talked about some symbols that he saw. Not quite sure here. They're all coming to him after these dates. It's very cool, very cool addition to the game. Quite excited about this. Okay, he's got the box, and then he goes. He started to be sent the symbols. Triangle. 8th Oct of October. Jenny. Triangle. Okay, so we got the last... The last symbol I remember on the hand was kind of like an upside down D. No, it's just an oil lamp. The brook horse. The grim symbol on the box itself. What else are we looking for? Oh, look, it's an actual D shape. I think it's a triangle D. But he said he got a thousand of these. Are uh, all exactly the same, or what? Oh, it's a flowchart of a madman. Time and space in the Grimm's head. A box that he did not write. He did not draw himself. Okay. There's another symbol. Living room being replaced. Five symbols, five watches. Okay, we got the box. Let's check out the box. So, we've written down, we've got triangle. Can we, let's, can we turn it here? One. Triangle stuck. And a D shape. Is this our D shape? Yes. The box. The proper box shape? Yes. And a normal looking triangle. Can I spin it there? Yes. And a D again? What? An upside down D this time. Can I? This one. No. Oh, I've, I've balls it up. Then what did I do? Oh, it's an upside down triangle. And I see. And then it's a D. A box. Triangle, and finally the inverted D. Oh, it does open. Oh, my heck. Ved top murderer executed. Christianstadt, January 21st. Yesterday morning, Ved top killer Daniel Svensson was executed at Christianstadt prison. 
He was found guilty for the heinous murder of young Stina Nielsen last year. The death sentence has been criticized by the highly renowned Dr. Helmer L Lundbeck, who stated that Daniel is suffering from an abnormal psyche. He seems to have problems discerning past from the present and has visions of terrible creatures, something not uncommon among schizophrenics. Daniel cannot be held accountable for his actions and should be given treatment at an institution for the criminally insane. The execution was performed by Gustav Dahlberg. This was his fourth execution. Last year, he was to perform the execution of the notorious Lisa Rasmussen, who was charged with the murder of four infants in Vedtorp, but who took her own life before the sentence could be carried out. Daniel Svensson was composed during the whole process. Besides the slightly shaking hand so common among the criminal type, you could not tell Daniel from any other young man. He sobbed loudly once he laid his head down low, but quickly regained his composure. A quick prayer and a swift, powerful stroke, and it was over. According to the attending priest Granath, Daniel's last words were, I should have killed myself, then none of this would have happened. And a note. You are long dead when I write this, and I have not yet been born. Yet we have a connection beyond life, death, space, and time. The impossible made possible by year walking. But the watchers always win. Even though you've not passed through the rift yet, they sense the urge and they want their sacrifice. I wish there could be another way. I'm sorry, but for her there is still hope. You can save her. You know what you must do. Do I have to ice myself? With this? Yes? Wow, that was your walk. The entire game was just a lead up to the journal story and that entire madness. That was very good. Very good. This is a two leveled game. And very, very good two level game here. We got one with the setup of the story, and then all of the secrets are given to you. Kinda. Again, as a puzzle in itself. The credits are a puzzle in itself. This was Year Walk. This is the epilogue to Year Walk. Thanks very much for watching. If you want the game, the link will of course be in the description below. Thanks very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.